Through the Performance Centre, it's been open, what, six months now? Yes. What, what was the idea behind this incredible place? Well, for as long as I've been in the WWE, they've had some kind of a developmental system. And it, it, you know, it was usually just a small building with a couple of rings in, and Triple H had this vision of making a world-class facility that, that you just, you know, the, to, to match anything that any other sport's got. And I had never imagined this, honestly. I mean, the first time I walked through here, I was just blown away um, and he wants it to be the this is a starting and finishing school to be the best pro wrestlers you can possibly be and sports entertainers and anything that you can wish to have in our business that's took me 30 years to learn you can get it here we've got the best trainers the best facilities best strength and conditioning and then the things that the detail stuff I mean everybody gets to there's a room where you can just go in and do like promos all you know on your own all day as long I mean I used to have to do that just stood in front of a mirror for hours and hours at a time but and they get instant feedback and they, they get to sit in with announcers we have an announce booth back there I've just been in there actually and they get to sit in and know what it feels like from our point of view to to be able to tell stories in the ring and to, to make it enjoyable for the people watching at home and everything how to deal with media it's 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 like a one-stop I hate to say that, but it is a one-stop shop to be the best you can be. And if, if you don't get the most out of this, there's something definitely wrong with you. Yeah. It's an incredible opportunity for young guys to come in. Yeah. But it's so different to how it used to be yeah. when there was all the territories and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you think it will work as well as it, it does for guys who could travel the world and get their experience that way? Yes, because we have such a, a different um, way of... Every ring has a different trainer in Everybody has different experience. There's people coming from all over the world. Um, we watch, we don't just watch WWE wrestling, we, we, we watch wrestling from all over the world. I was showing them some World of Sports stuff the other day and oh, really? teaching them, you know, just different ways of doing things. So when you get here, you have to be creative. Uh, there's, there's a night we do like a couple of days a week where they do promo classes, uh, communication skills, they call it. They can't say promo anymore. Um, and Every week you're encouraged to come and do something completely different and, and, and the same as goes in the ring, you know, you have to be different or you're just not going to stand out. Yeah. Unless you've got two heads, you've, you've got to really work hard to, to stand out. So that's there. We can also go, I mean, the only reason I'm stood here now is because I died on my backside a thousand times in England before anybody even saw me on a nationwide scale there. And then it went on to the travelling Europe and then coming over here. But we try and... Okay, well, it's different now. It's no good. I hate that old wrestler mentality. Well, in my day, it's different. Let's make it work. Well, prepare for this. Let's prepare for that. Let's prepare for that. Because the only reason I'm here is because, like I say, I had great trainers and I had people in the ring teaching me what to do. So, let's. What did they do for me? You can break that down into. We did this in so much time. Let, let's teach you this. Let's teach you that. Let's teach not what. Certainly not what to do. And so you're far more prepared for it quickly, really. I mean, you can probably get, we can give you 10 years worth of experience in, in a year. Yeah. Whether you've got it out there, that's no different than any other entertainer or sportsman. You've got to go out there and you've got to make it work for you. We give you the tools, it's up to them to, to sort it out. Because only one, one person in how many thousand actually make it on a, a small level, never mind a big level. That's up to them. I was going to ask you, I mean, in your personal opinion, do you think it's something, I mean, is there only so much you can teach? Do you yes. think you have to have that, I hate to use the word X factor, but, yeah. you know, it, do you believe in that? Yes. Yeah. And it takes some people longer than others. You know, it takes some people a long time, but you, that's one of my things that they trust me with. That. I see, seem to have a way of spotting that in people, and it may be two, three years with this fella. This fella, if he's not got it in six months, he's never going to get it. And, and we don't hold anybody to that, but it usually works out. There's a few people around that seem to have that. And it usually works. You know, some people just will never get this. Some people, they, they get successful despite themselves. They can do everything wrong, and it, but people like them anyway. And that's all it really is. It's making a connection with your audience. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's got nothing to do with... Uh, you know, it's how technically good you are, or it's got absolutely nothing to do with it. It's whether you can make a connection with your audience. And in music business, there's some rotten singers out there that sell out arenas, right? 
and there's some incredible ones that can't put a 500 people in a club. So, yeah. you, it's so, something special. So that connection with an, an audience, I'll be remiss not to ask you about Daniel Bryan, yes. who is just a, obviously a phenomenal wrestler. Yeah. At, at the core of it that seems to have come out of nowhere what do you think is the sort of secret behind that why has that happened because i know you're very close to, to daniel yes there's, there's no secret to that I, you, from day one that that was what i saw in him and show michael he, you know I, I didn't train him i trained with him show michael's trained him show michael saw that in him from day one i saw it from the day i met him 13 years ago and so i did everything i could to, to be able to bring that out of him which was Send him to England. I sent him. He worked on on the Butlins camps for three, four years. There. Did he do Butlins. Yes, yeah, and because I knew that'd be a great place for him to be able to go out. And you've got a captive audience of a thousand children, right? If you can't make them scream and shout and learn how to play with their emotions, you're not going to get to this level. Yeah. So I sent him there. I sent him there. Robbie Brookside's there. I, I wanted him to train with him. Uh, got him into Japan. Got and then he took out, you know, his own career. Sort of people started wanting him different places. He sort of took everything and made it work for him. And against circumstances that, you know, he's five foot eight, and he's, he's on, well, he's bigger now, but he used to be 180 pounds. He just had that magic from day one, you know, because you see a lot of people come along, and it's not about, him, it's got nothing to do with him being a great wrestler. That's a bonus. Everything he's got is a bonus on top of the, the initial thing that he had that was that something. Uh, it's very much like a kind of young Shawn Michaels, isn't he? And the fact that he's not the biggest guy, but he's a great character. And, as you say, he's an incredible wrestler as well. He's got the whole it's package. all a bonus, yeah. I mean, that, <clears throat> this job starts from the second you walk through the curtain. Yeah. If people don't believe in you and you don't believe in yourself, that, that's the end of it. And so he always had that about him and he always had that presence about him. Some people have that. And the rest of it has just worked. And, you know, it took him a, a while to get here. He used to call me all the time. Every single week we spoke before he came back here. And he, Are you working on this? Are you working on that? Are you working on your promo skills? Are you working on... What happens if they want you to be an entertainer? You know, you just got to entertain. That's why he was... And yeah, he's, and he was happy to do it. So I knew he could do it all. All he needed was the, the opening. And, and he's... T Some people talk such rubbish. That they, there's never a time since he's been back in this company that he's not been featured in something. And people think he's being held down, but if you had to go back and look at his career, he's just been, he's had a great position the whole time he's been here. And that's because he's very good at what he does, but it's from the second he walks through that curtain, people believe in him. Yeah. And you can't buy that, you can't teach that. You've, you've got to have that belief in yourself and that kind of attitude that you're going to succeed. We've certainly got a following that we kind of haven't seen grow organically since sort of Steve Austin, I would say. And that caused some controversy at the Royal Rumble a couple of weeks ago. Yes. BBC in the UK even ran a story about mm. it. There's a petition going on. Do you think he'll headline WrestleMania? That's the million dollar question at the moment. If this year, I don't know. But will he headline WrestleMania? Of course he'll headline WrestleMania. I mean, barring any kind of injuries, he's a superstar and a true superstar. And you can't take that away and he will get to that position. No doubt about it. And, and whether he's in the main event at WrestleMania this year or not, he's still going to headline WrestleMania this year because he'll get more of a reaction than anybody else will get. So it's not always about championships. And, uh, it's about having that connection. That's what it is at the end of the day. And I'm, I'm sure he's quite happy with his paychecks as well, you know. I'm sure he is, yeah. Yeah. And um, what about yourself? You're a seasoned veteran. You've been, I mean, how long have you been in the industry now? Uh, 30. Going on 31 years this year, yeah. 1983, I had my first match. And you, you still get in the ring from time to time? Do you still enjoy it? Yes, I do. And, and because I've got to the point now where I, I can pick my spots yeah. and I, I, I like to do certain things with certain wrestlers, especially on NXT. And, and, and I'm really into the storytelling side of it and, and drama and all that as I've got older. And, and I like to tell, I just had a thing with Antonio Cesaro on NXT, which was as good as anything I've done, really. I, I feel that as far as just the storytelling, you know, you get old and you can't do what you used to, but I like to do that kind of, pe where people can, this is different than everybody else is doing and, and that kind of stuff. But I, I'm still, bit, it was a couple of years ago when I wasn't and I had to pull back a bit, 
I just it had all caught up with me over the years, I just banged up, and I wasn't being able to, to move as well as I could. But now I'm I actually, honestly, feel better than I've had a few years of only wrestling a few times a year, and I can go better than ever really. But I just no need at this point of the game. I'm 40, be 46 this year, so. But you're still loving it. Oh yeah, and then I, I get you know I'm, I'm not always here, but I get to come down here every every so many weeks and, and I'll spend certain weeks here. I'm always on the road with the WWE doing stuff. And yeah. But then I come down here, we do the, the NXT TVs. I announce some some of the weeks on that and then I'm here and work with the guys developing. And I, so I'm a detail, but like, and that's my, is the little details about how to take it to a different level of not just moves and, because this really got nothing to do with your move set or your, it's, it's making so that much, connection, yeah. yeah so it's, much about the psychology, the psychology it? of it, yeah. and that, that's why I come down here and work with certain people. And I'll, I'm very giving with my time. Triple H makes me makes. <laughs> it's like I feel bad even saying this, but he makes certain people. It's like an, they earn a spot if they do so well in this, then they get to spend time with me, working on detail and stuff. And it's like, oh, he'll he'll do the same. Certain people get to work with. You know the Undertaker, or so, and then you get to work. To you have to earn a spot, which I feel a bit bad about sometimes because I want to help everybody, but I do really. Just don't tell him. I wish okay. I didn't because they wouldn't be calling me at three o'clock in the morning, all of them bothering me. But it's a tough life. All right, lovely to meet you. Oh, thank, thank you, you very so much. much